Okay, so what we're going to do is take a look at how we can use data to drive our tests. So rather than creating a journey, giving it one scenario of data and having it always be the same, we can create a, a test data table that has multiple different scenarios of data that we can run against the same journey so we can test it with different data. So let's look at how we do this. Now, before we do anything else, let's make a new goal and let's call this one data testing. And we're going to do this again against our rocket shop dot virtuoso dot QA. And then we add our first journey as normal. It's going to give us our first bit there. Now I could make uh, a checkpoint adding some uh, items to our bag, but I've got one in the library already. So I'm going to use a library checkpoint for adding a product to basket. Okay, we've got that there. And then we can add a new checkpoint for checking out. There we go. So we've got an item in our basket. What we're going to do now is click on checkout. And we're going to create a simple checking out. We're going to put an email, a name, and a phone number in there. Okay, so I'm going to write james.b at test.com in email. No, oh, if we spell our set right, it helps. There we go. So we're going to write that in there. We're going to write James B in full name. Tidy that up. There we go. Right, James B in full name. And we're going to write our phone number in phone number. We've got our data put in. Now, what we've done there is we've created a functional test and we've written some data for it. And when we run that test, we're going to see it will run, but just with the data we put in. What if we want to run this test with different customers data? That's what we want to be doing now. So what we can do rather than running it with that same data like we've just done here, we can click in our side menu and we can click to test the data. And in here, we can make a new data table. Let's call this customers. Now you can see I can import that from a CSV. I'll show you how to do that in a moment, but let's create a blank table for the moment. And I'm going to add some attributes. So we had our attributes here were email, full name, and phone number. And we can then put in some scenarios of data. So each row is a scenario of data. So we had James B at test dot com James B put in our test data but then let's make somebody else as well let's do Jane dot y at test dot com Jane y Okay, so we've got two sets of data. Now I could put as many bits of data here as I'd want to give us as many different scenarios as possible. What we do need to be aware of here is whatever we put in row number one will be the default data for our test. So if we've got this data mapped to a test, it will always use uh, row one unless we tell it to use the full data table. So let's save that and we've then got our table ready to go. Now I did mention that we could create a table from a CSV. So if you had a CSV file of data, I could just go to a new data table. Let's just name that test data. And if I grab my CSV and drop it in here, or I could browse for it, but if I drop that CSV in here, so the first row contains the headers. If I create that, you can see I can create a table just from a CSV file as well. So we don't have to manually enter that. And it's done the same thing. It's added our attributes. It's put in our scenarios so we could use that as well. Right, let's go back to our journey and let's add this data table into the journey we created. So there's our data testing journey. There we are. There's the journey we worked on. Now, to map our data, what we're going to do is click the three dots at the top of the page and we've got manage test data. If we click in there, 
we can select from the top right hand corner a test data table. So there you can see the two data tables that we've just created. We could have as many data tables there as we'd like. We want to use our customer's data. And look at the three attributes that we created when we made our data table. What we need to now do is drag and drop them to the relevant steps. So I'm going to drop the email section into email. And you can see it's mapping those to each step. When we save that now, we've now got that mapped and that's what's going to happen when we run. Now, remember, if we just run it as is, it's going to use the first row of data out of our data table. So we should see this do our james.b because we haven't told it to do a data driven test. And as we go through, there we go, we can see it's doing the James B identity scenario that we had. So if we want to execute that with our different data scenarios, we're going to click the same three dots again, journey options. And this time we're going to go execute advanced and we can tell it to run with test data. Now, when we select that, so it said all rows selected, we can go into select rows and we can select individual rows. So if there's any certain rows we wanted to run, we could do that. But for us, it makes sense to select all of our rows, but you could select a subset of your data table there as well. Now, when we say execute now, what I'm going to do is jump to project activity and show you what's going on. You can see now we now have two journeys running. And if we click into there and click into our journey, see, we've got two data rows at the top. Let's just refresh that. So I've got my two data rows at the top. And if I click on a step here, you can see there's our James B. Let's click on our last step so we can see our full data. So there's our James B data. If I click on data row two, you can see our Jane Y test data is showing there. So from our two executions, we've got separate scenarios being displayed now. We can report on each of those with our own screenshots. So each one's got their own screenshots, their own healing, their own success or failure states, which would depend on the data. So they are completely separate executions that are done in their own way. Um, so that can gives us lots of power. Now, one more thing before we move on. If we go back to our test data, we can still edit that test data. We could move the data around and reorder it. And that would change what is our default data by moving that round and resaving it. So we've got the control to do that. So that's how we go about using test data to run tests.